Hello, Woodlake Life Groups. I'm Pastor Kelly from House of Prayer. It's good to be with you during this season of Lent uh, as you continue your theme on hope. For this week's Life Group, I'd like to share the story of Job. It's a parable on the innocence of suffering. And parables were often used by Jesus uh, to teach a moral or a spiritual lesson through illustrations or stories. So in the parable of Job, the main character is Job, who is said to be a blameless and upright man who feared God and turned away from evil. He had 10 children, a whole lot of animals, uh, and uh, many servants working for him. I think we could say that his household uh, was abundant. And then one day God and Satan, or the accuser, had a conversation about Job. God said that there was no one else like him on earth, that he was blameless and upright, feared God and turned away from evil. And then the accuser replied, yeah, but you've given him everything. If you take it all away, he'll curse you to your face. And with that, God gave the accuser power over all Job had, setting the stage for the suffering that would follow. We learn that Job lost almost everyone to death, his servants, his children, his animals. And then he was stricken with terrible sores from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. And after all this happened, his friends barely recognized him and they wept aloud, grieving for him. But then they sat with him for seven silent days and nights, offering him the comfort and ministry of their presence. Job finally broke the silence and said, why did I not die at birth? He lamented and carried on, but he was totally honest with God. Well, his friends started to chime in thinking that Job must have sinned to be experiencing such great suffering. But Job never allowed their thoughts to convince him otherwise. He knew he wasn't to blame. Job spoke to God again and again, and God listened and answered again and again. Job remained faithful to God throughout his suffering. So the accuser may have made him suffer, but Job never cursed God. In fact, Job had glimpses of hope along the way, moments of remembering what God had done for him, and then he reminded God of it. In chapter 10, uh, Job said to God, remember that you fashioned me like clay. You clothed me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. You have granted me life and steadfast love, and your care preserved my spirit. Hope is restored through remembrance. We can have a moment of hope emerge in the middle of trauma, pain, and suffering. These moments of hope move us into tomorrow, and I'm, I'm sure we've all had them. And I believe these moments, these glimpses of hope, are blessings from God, giving us a memory or an expectation to keep us going. And even though Job's suffering continued, he had the ability to have hope that he'd one day see God. In chapter 19, in spite of what his friends were telling him, Job said, for I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God. During this time of Lent, our thoughts are focused on Jesus and the innocent suffering he went through for us. And yet, through Jesus' great suffering, he too cried out to God, knowing he would be heard. His prayers didn't cease, though his suffering continued. On the cross, he trusted as he spoke, 
Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In this season of Lent, our hope is in knowing our Redeemer lives. Well, it was a privilege to share this time with you. I encourage you to reread the beginning of Job and the other verses and discuss this, this week's questions in your life groups. God's peace and hope. Amen.